Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here, and in this tutorial I'd like to show you Texturize from Red Giant Universe. Texturize is a very handy texturizing utility that uses photographic elements to overlay different textures on your footage, either to full frame footage or to text. It works very well in both situations, and I'll show you examples of both of these in just a couple scenes from a horror TV style treatment. So. Let me jump to a blank comp with our footage here first. We've got just a little bit of color correction on here to give it some more contrast and push some of those red shadows up in the uh, red channel there. Next, I'll apply Texturize by going to Universe Stylize and dropping Texturize on the footage. As I mentioned, it overlays a photographic texture element. This image is stored at a 2K resolution within the plugin. The image is also seamlessly tiling. So as you scale this up or down, you won't see any edges. This also provides you with some flexibility in terms of the resolution that you're working within. I'm currently working at 1920 by 1080, but I could easily work at a higher resolution because these do seamlessly tile and they are at a fairly high resolution. So I can bring these down or up and you won't see a whole lot of loss or degradation in the source image. The parameters are pretty straightforward. The texture simply selects the photographic element that you're working with. The scale is the scale of the image. Center allows you to move this image around. Texture opacity is, well, the opacity of it. Uh, very handy is the texture contrast, which is pretty straightforward. But when it's used at its default blending mode of multiply, you get a very deep blending of the textures because the textures are basically grayscale. So as we turn up this contrast, more of the gray areas become dark. And those dark areas, when set to multiply, really darken the image. In fact, more so than the darken blending mode. But you could go for a different look like uh, hard light or you could have it brighten things using lighten or add. It's really up to you and, and the type of look that you're going for. I'll set this to, let's say, uh, hard light and then we'll go into the tint strength and turn that up. This is pulling in this tint color that we've got right here. We can add a little bit of blur to the texture by turning up this blur. And this is handy when you are doing things like layering your textures and trying to create sort of a layered texture look. Now I'll go into the mask section here, which is enabled by default, punches out a, uh, an area in the center of this texture overlay. And I'm gonna bring the scale up just a little bit and I'll duplicate this. So I mentioned trying to create kind of a layered look. So let's set another uh, grunge texture on top of this. Let's turn up this scale. So now we've got sort of contrasting textures overlaid on top of each other and maybe I'll take one of them and just blur it a little bit. So it gives maybe a sort of fake depth of field kind of effect. Now we're working in After Effects and After Effects is certainly an animation program and these parameters are all animatable. So I think it's really useful to take advantage of that. Now, in this case, we could really kind of create some dissonance with the image in terms of creating contrasting motion between what the camera is doing and what the texture is doing. This is a common theme found in the opening of The Walking Dead. So this camera has a little bit of motion. We'll follow that motion a little bit, but it won't follow it exactly. So it's not quite a parallax effect, but it's not quite motion tracking it. We just want a little bit of motion that kind of moves along with it. Actually, let's turn off the second texture so we can see it's kind of moving along with it. I hit U to show my per, uh, keyframes here, and we'll set a couple of uh, scale keyframes. So I'll have this first one. Uh, well, maybe we'll have this one scale down. So I'll have this first keyframe start a little bit large, and that one will get smaller over time. The second one, we can go in. I'll set a keyframe or a scale and text and the center. And we'll have this one get a little bit larger. In fact, maybe we'll have it move in the opposite direction. So in short, we're setting up contrast in motion between the textures and the camera movement. Uh, one other feature we have in here is a displacement map. So what this does is use the embedded texture and treats it as a displacement map for the image. So uh, if I set this horizontal value a little bit higher or the vertical displacement, it uses the luminance map 
from the texture to displace the pixel. So black pushes them one way, white pushes them the other way, and gray is neutral. We can soften the map here, and this is all independent of the texture, opacity, and contrast, and all that up here. Um, but it just allows you to drive a displacement map to the image from the texture that you've already got loaded. Next, let's take a look at this on text. So I've got some simple text here. I'm just going to uh, drop that filter, the texturized filter right on there. Now, immediately what I'll do is go to the mask section and turn that off. I really just want to have the whole text use the, the texture and not have it matted out in the center. I will take this tint strength and really crank this up, maybe get some extra contrast going here. Now in the background, just have a simple solid. This is just a rusty kind of earth tone uh, solid. I'll apply texturize to that. Again, we'll turn off the mask and we can simply use this as kind of a textured wall in the background. So for this example, I can set this to, let's say, uh, number 14 would be pretty good. And in this case, I'll really crank up this contrast because the more contrast is going to kind of make it darker. Now, to add a little bit of foreground variation, create a, another solid. This will be a, a grunge overlay. So I'll put this on top of the text. Again, we'll apply texturize. Uh, we'll use number 12, which is kind of a spotted kind of look. Again, let's turn that mask off. Now, in this case, I'll set this blending mode to screen. So we'll start to lose those darker areas and basically have those white spotty areas on top. Uh, let's move that up. It has that kind of center section right there that uh, fits nicely for our text. So uh, again, I got a little bit of motion on the text. Let's create some contrasting motion with this overlay so we'll have this get bigger. In fact, I'll probably turn this contrast up. Now this is set to a blending mode, which is blending with that gray. And I'm actually gonna just set this to none. Uh, this way I can turn the opacity down. If I would have turned the opacity down before, this is set to multiply, just hit undo there. If I turn the opacity down, it's gonna blend back with that original, which is that gray solid uh, that I created. So just to keep that in mind, go back to the blending mode here, set that to none. And now I can turn this opacity down. And now we're not seeing anything uh, overlaying because this is still set to a screen blending mode. That is Texturize from Red Giant Universe. My name is Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching.